Hey guys, Tapping here. So, I wasn't necessarily expecting to make this video, but, well, here we are. <laughs> so, uh, I think, you know, I, I, I went through part of the RMA process myself with HP, and so actually I sent my headset in, and then actually I ended up uh, getting it sent, sent back to me, so same headset. For those who don't know, you know, I just had like a couple minor issues. So, um, you know, I have two dead pixels and my left channel microphone has an issue. Yeah, you know, I, I knew from day one that I was going to at some point do an RMA. Now, I, I used the headset for a couple weeks anyway. You know, I was like, okay, let me just, you know, wait a minute here. Um, and then, yeah, I, you know, sent in my headset and then found out that RMAs aren't being handled until like January 29th. Uh, 2021. Yeah, so I, I requested that they send it back, and they did. Um, so that's that's where I was at. This is the main piece of advice, you know, that I wanted to give for this video. But nonetheless, let's go over more generally, you know, what you should do, and also I'm gonna go over uh, what experiences I had from doing an RMA. Yeah, first tip is to be nice to HP employees. Okay, this is just like <laughs> life tip. Uh, be nice. So, you know, these HP employees, whoever you're talking to on the phone is probably trying to help you. You know, they're not responsible for issues with pre-orders or RMAs. Uh, that being said, uh, I think we should hold HP, like the company as a whole, you know, accountable for how they've handled pre-orders and RMAs. My biggest tip again of this video, which I will justify more later, is, you know, don't RMA right now unless you really have to, right? Like, if you're able to enjoy your headset still, you know, if you just have, like, a dead pixel or something, um, like, you know, really just, I would probably advise to hold off. Yeah, so let's start more simple. Uh, so, you know, let's say you are having some issue with your headset. Um, the first piece of advice that I've got for you is uh, do some troubleshooting. You know, I'm sure most of you would do this first, you know, is... Um, Try to look online, see if you can find information. Um, I've linked in the description uh, troubleshooting, like general troubleshooting tips for uh, the Reverb G2 on the community website. In addition, you should also join the HP Reverb G2 Discord where you can actually just ask other G2 owners and um, see you know what kind of troubleshooting you can, you can do. I'm gonna, in this video, list a few of the kind of common ones um, just to sort of keep awareness of it. Uh, so one of the first things to do is make sure Windows is updated. Um, you know, go into updates and security and check that Windows is the most up-to-date version. Uh, also, um, NVIDIA drivers. So this one's kind of a weird one. Uh, the most recent NVIDIA drivers actually have known Steam VR issues. I personally went back to 446.14. That was the one that I know doesn't have Steam VR issues for sure, um, and I'm hoping that uh, sooner rather than later, NVIDIA drivers will uh, update that. Of course, if you have a newer GPU like the 30 series, um, then yeah, you kind of have to just deal with newer drivers. Another thing to make sure is that your cable is, you know, if your headset's not working at all, you know, make sure your cable's all the way in. Um, so there's a little, there's a little uh, dot on the top of the cable that should be touching the headset so that's really important too then another issue is you know check your microphone so if your microphone's uh clipping all the time that's probably because you didn't turn down the gain uh so go um into your sound settings and check your microphone and turn it down i turned it down to like 30 or 40 percent yeah another common issue is that your audio will be either not working or kind of you have like staticky or maybe they're just very sensitive to like how you move the speakers Basically, what you'll want to do is you'll want to use a screwdriver and actually unscrew. And this is totally allowed, by the way. It's in your it's in your manual actually uh, to be able to take out. So take out take out the there's one screw for each speaker. Um, so you know if you're having a speaker issue, make sure to unscrew it. You know check your contacts, make sure the pins work. Um, you know they kind of have like a spring spring loaded thing there. And yeah, just put the contacts back on and screw it in and see if that fixes the issue. Oh, and then one more thing is, so if you're having like maybe uh, weird tracking issues, like beyond what I've discussed before, maybe your headset tracking is not working even. So, um, or generally any issue really is you should check your USB ports. So, uh, you know, use that USB-C to A adapter to like try different USB ports and see if that resolves your issue. 
So yeah, those are most of the like really common issues. But like I said, this is not an exhaustive list. You know, look look uh, into your specific issues and and try to resolve them. Um, but you know, let's say you've you know you've done all of that, right? You've done your homework and you have determined that it is probably a hardware issue. Then what do you do? So uh, you can you know contact HP. First thing you're probably going to need is your serial number. So your serial number can be found, uh, if you still have your box, <laughs> it's found in the top left corner of the box. There's a little black sticker. For one reason or another, if you don't have your box, the serial number can be found on your headset itself. So if you take off the facial interface on the inside of the left side panel, there's a sticker um, and that will have your model and serial number on it. So yeah, once you've got that, then you, you know, probably register your product or whatever, or, um, you know, at least you'll, you'll have to have it ready for, for, you know, when you contact HP. First advice is call HP, not, I did chat initially, um, but you know, it, I, it just left me with more questions than answers. Um, I did start my RMA process through the, through the chat. That's how I got my case number and everything. But I ended up calling HP and um, talk to the workstations team is my advice. So HP is a big company and they are not all well versed in G2 shenanigans. So uh, yeah, their workstations team, which is like the Z by HP people, you know, they're like a pretty small team, like 30 people. Yeah, they're, they're the ones who would be very knowledgeable about this headset. Once I got the RMA process started, um, one of the advice that I was given was to actually remove my speakers before sending my headset back. So when I sent back my headset, I sent back literally only the headset. I kept the cable, I kept the controllers, I kept even the speakers that were attached to the headset. Um, I literally just sent in the HMD. Yeah, so what they did was they sent me back a box just like this one um and inside what you will get is a bunch of packing material so you get your bubble wrap and then like two of these pieces of styrofoam one for the top and one for the bottom um and you just yeah carefully package your headset back in there they give you a piece of tape to you know wrap it up and they give you the the shipping label um so you'll stick that onto the box and package it and ship it. Initially, they told me that this was gonna take like a week. You know, that's like their usual turnaround time for RMAs. But very shortly after they received my headset, they changed that date from December 8th to January 29th. Yeah, at that point, that's when I contacted HP again and, and asked them to return my headset because um, my issues aren't like, I can still use my headset. I'm still very happy with it. And so, and I know for sure I want to keep it, right? So I'm not returning it within that 30 day window. I'm that, I don't plan to do that at all. If you are thinking about doing that, then you'll definitely want to not do an RMA. You'll want to do a return process, which is a totally different process. So be aware of that too. So I know that I'll RMA this again at some point, but yeah, for now, this is, this is the situation. <laughs> so yeah, my tips for, my tips for RMAing really, again, just, you know, you know, when you contact HP, like use the phone, like call them. Don't do like the chat because it's going to be really hard to connect with someone who is knowledgeable on the, on the G2 specifically. Um, and so if you call them and then try to get to their workstations team, that, that would be my my advice. Um, sorry, sorry, HP workstations, because I know you're a small team and you don't want to you're not really supposed to be handling that kind of crap. But Right now, it seems to be the only way to like talk to people who are really knowledgeable about this. So maybe that'll update in the future. Again, I'll keep updated uh, an updated comment maybe on the top of this video so that I can uh, you know provide more recent information. So yeah, if you've if you've already made your headset, um, yeah, let us know. You know, like tell us how your experience was. Tell us if it was similar to mine or um, you know or maybe you're getting your RMA sooner. Um, that would be fantastic. So. Yeah, let us know how it's going and if you have any advice. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. It's really just, you know, I just wanted to raise awareness, especially about like the RMA process itself, because it was very confusing for me and I've dealt with these types of things before. This should be really a much more streamlined experience. You know, this should be, you get a G2, you know, if, if you know, if you do some troubleshooting and if you still have problems, then it should be really easy to just return and replace. But Anyway, 
here we are. And this isn't even getting into uh, like some of the crazy stuff that's happened to some of the early people who are made. So uh, there were a couple, there were multiple people actually who reported on Reddit that they got a G1 back instead of a G2. That's crazy. Like, imagine sending in your G2 and then getting the older version of the headset. That particular issue has since been resolved. But like, HP, come on, get your stuff together. <laughs> I I feel uh, feel bad for people who do have to deal with this stuff. So, anyway, uh, hopefully this video is helpful. But hopefully you don't have to use the advice in this video. Hopefully you just have a seamless experience. Yeah, that's it for the video. Take care.